how to make some predictions using a globe model without using math or 3D animations. So what I'm going to predict using my globe model, is first thing is the declination angle of the sun, and this is always what you start with. The second thing, which is based on the declination angle of the sun, is the length of day. So let's go and see what's going to happen. The declination angle of the sun is the latitude line which the sun is perpendicular to. So for example, you can see now that the sun rays are coming and perpendicular on that latitude, which is the Capricorn. So this is winter. Now, after three months, this changes, and now the sun is perpendicular on the equator. Another three months, it's on the Tropic of Cancer. Another three months, and it's back again on the equator on the opposite side. So, as it moves, the sun, this is what, what would be called the subsolar point along the year. It's moving from here, crossing to the equator, and then to the Tropic of Cancer, and then back again in the opposite direction. Now we're looking at the Earth from the perspective of the Sun, or the Sun point of view. And this is the center of that cross-section of that sphere in front of us. And so this would be the point on the surface of the Earth where the Sun is perpendicular to. Now, let's ask a question. What season is, is this? Well, that season doesn't exist in reality because uh, that would be zero uh, tilt, like there's no tilt for the Earth. So we, we have to put the tilt first. And now we can say that this is winter. Now, after one quarter of a year, the Earth would have moved one quarter of a circle around the Sun to the left side of the screen. We are the sun, and the Earth is going to move around us uh, to the left side, moving 90 degrees. And since the Earth axis is fixed in space, then the, the Earth axis would appear if it's rotated uh, 90 degrees to the right, like so. And so, after uh, three months from winter, this is the equinox, after another three months, here it is, this is the summer. And after another three months, it's the equinox again. So what about after one month? One month, that would be one twelfth of a circle, or 30 degrees. So we, if we spin this model in front of us 30 degrees, I I guess this is 30 degrees, I'm not sure. Uh, you can see where's the this, this little hand, or this is what would be the subsolar point, at which latitude it's standing. And that would be the declination angle for the sun in that specific date. And so let's do that with our globe model. So as I did with Google Earth, I took the first image during the equinox and then I I picked a date not exactly a date I wanted to to wait after the equinox one eighth of a year that's around one and a half month one eighth of a year from the 22nd of September would be the 6th of of November uh, late late night at the uh, of the 6th of November so I rotated this platform that you see at 45 degrees and just because it was convenient parallel to the tiling of my floor I know it's 45 degrees uh, so uh, I took the other image which is this and of course I had to orient both images to be perfectly aligned so I put a circle on the first image and then after I laid the second image I did my best to have it also exactly in the same uh, circle. So, uh, what I do after that is take a line from the North Pole to the South Pole. And the intersection of that line would be the center of this circle, or the subsolar point. 
like so. Now we don't need the circle or the line. All we need is the subsolar point and the second image. And it's very clear this is the equator and this is the subsolar point uh, closing to the summer for Australia. Now if we zoom in a little bit, uh, each segment of these lines is uh, 10 degrees of latitude, so this is 20, this is a little bit uh, before 20, but I want accurate measurements, so I bring in a scale. So the 20 degrees of latitude here is at 45, and the subsolar point is at 35, 36, 37, 38. So I bring my calculator and divide 38 by 45 and then I multiply by 20. And the result would be this latitude line which or where the sun is perpendicular to is at six, 16 degrees point 88 or point 0.9, no problem, south. Now let's check that against reality and there's many sites many ways you can do it I prefer this one because it's easy so it's the 6th of November and the declination angle of the Sun is minus 16 point 34 that's around half a degree of error only and remember that I'm using a literally uh, <laughs> a patched up globe model that's worth two dollars and I get this amount of accuracy. So now we we determine that we can find the declination angle of the Sun and this is helpful for many things like if you want to know the elevation uh, angle for your location you you do a simple equation it's it's, uh, it's not in my head right now uh, but we can also use the uh, the declination angle of the Sun to determine the length of day and how do we do that uh, let's move these things we don't need them we just keep the subsolar point and we go to this image and we add the terminator line this is how we're going to calculate the length of day but we want the Earth to be straight up, like so. And uh, what we do is we reorient the terminator line with an angle equal to the declination angle that we shown. And it will be shown right here. So let me rotate this thing. Uh, minus 6, minus 7, minus 11, uh, 15, 16, point 87. That's close enough. And remember, I'm using the same information that I brought. That's 16.88. I'm not using uh, the the actual reality. Uh, I want to see where where my predictions is going to lead me step by step. I can I can do the one with reality declination angle but I want to see with my error uh, where am I going to. So I'll pick this latitude this is um, minus 30 and I'm going to get or conclude the day of length for the, uh, the day length for this latitude. So from this center line here if you can see this is going from the North Pole to the South Pole. If a position on the Earth crossed that line until the other opposite side with that line, that would be 12 hours. So these would be 12 hours of day because the Sun is coming from this side. 12 hours of day, but hey, there's still some daylight here. So every degree represents 4 minutes. If the, the whole circle is 306 degrees for 24 hours so one degree represents four minutes so how many degrees are those so from here to here is 10 degrees and we can say that from here to here is also 
10 degrees. So we have 10 degrees at this side, 10 degrees at the other side, so we have 20 degrees extra rotation uh, for daylight. Now, how many minutes are those? So, 20 by 4, that's 80 minutes plus the 12 hours. And that would be, what, 13 hours and 20 minutes. So let's go to Sun Calc and we go to latitude minus 30 for the same date that we selected that would be November the 6th of November and you see here the day length duration is 13 hours 25 minutes so I'm off by 5 minutes which is really I think it's a miracle because uh, these sites take a refraction into account while my calculations here on this globe model doesn't. So uh, this is just a, a d demonstration of how you can conclude uh, information from from simple things if, if you understand the globe model, if you understand the heliocentric model and uh, to recap what what have we used until now? We used the Earth rotation that's the one degree for every four minutes. We use the axial tilt. We use the Earth orbit. Uh, the Earth orbit, not exactly uh, perfectly, because I presumed a circular uh, orbit, not an elliptical orbit. So the better tools you have, the if you have a better globe model than this, if you have um, good ways of measuring angles, then you can get the same information more accurately. And uh, well, I think that's all for now. I know I mentioned refraction and how it affects the uh, the length of day, and I'm ready for any explanation for that in another episode. And thank you all for watching.